and welcome to Edukimi's Gazette discussion for 6th August 2021. My name is Harsh Singh and this discussion will contain many interesting articles from the Gazette of 6th of August. Well, our discussion is divided in two videos. The first one is on the featured news, which is on climate change and the role of states. We have always known that climate change is an impending crisis. It is a crisis in offing. It will happen. And this is where the role of states is a very important theme, right? This theme today will contain what is the need for states to be an important participant in handling climate change? What are the obstructions in the whole process? And what is the way out of this chakra view in this system? What is the way out? What are the solutions in this particular issue? So a novel article, if asked in main examination, one might get bogged out, right? One might get bold and therefore an important theme you must, you must look at, right? Now, the second video will contain the rest of the discussion, which is on the fat man, which we have dedicated in this day of history. So we will understand what fat man is, right? Remember 6th of August. Okay, new snapshots, two important snapshots. One is on retrospective taxation amendment, which is very important for international relations, important for FDI, right? And economy sector of India. And the second one, an important update from uh, Supreme Court on the death row pa pardon arrangement, right? So important update from the Supreme Court. Image of the day is on an artifact SI-427. Terms and concept. First, INS Mikran. We have had two INS Mikran. We'll study about them today. And then a turtle in news, critically endangered turtle. After that, Air Quality Commission and then a national mission on edible oil, oil farms, especially because we import a lot of oil farms, right? Three editorials for you today. First of all is about economic tsunami. That means 30 years of LPG reforms. The second one is the India's go down, which are overflowing. So article from agriculture sector. And the third one is also relevant to the featured news. So it is on India, China, India, Nepal, flood management, right? Case study of the day, a good one, important one. It is about not only a person who has worked hard, it is also about the mentor. So a student-teacher relationship being discussed here, a very important good case study. This is the theme of Lavlina and her coach. Lavlina, the one who won bronze medal in the Olympics in boxing and her coach Sandhya. So this is the case study of the day, right? So let us begin the discussion. 6th of August is a very special day in the history of the world. Why? Because on this special day in 1945, America had dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan, in the territory of Japan. So the first bomb which was dropped was on 6th of August and the second bomb was dropped on 9th of August. The first one was called as Little Boy, the second one called as Fat Man, right? So uh, this day in this history, as we say, this day is not for the Fat Man. The 6th of August was actually for the little boy. So a slight mistake here. It resulted in the decimation, the, the death of around 40% of the population right there in that city. And most of the population was civilian, right? So this is how we understand the impact of a war, especially a nuclear warfare. People dread it, right? And I was watching a movie, Catcher of a Spy, right? This is where America is trying to compete with Germany in production of a nuclear weapon. So they are trying to, USA is trying to uh, ensure that uh, that Germany does not create a nuclear weapon with the help of its important scientist Heisenberg. So this is a true story, right? And this is where we look at important cities of Japan. Now important uh, islands of Japan, there are four islands of Japan, Hokkaido, and then we have Honshu, Shikoku, and Kyosho. So Shikoku is the smallest one and the biggest one is Honshu, the one which has Tokyo, its capital, right? So look at the important cities, Sendai, Sendai framework was adopted for, for disaster management. Fukushima, the important city in the eastern coast, this was where the nuclear meltdown in 2011 happened. And then we have Nagoya, Nagoya protocol, remember, this is about convention of biological diversity, equitable sharing of benefits of the resources. Right? So this was it. Kyoto, Kyoto Protocol, right, right here, right? Again in the in the big island, right? So Honshu Island. And then we have Hiroshima on the west, almost on the west coast. This is a part of Honshu Island, right? And we have we have Nagasaki, right? We also have Miyazaki, right? Remember Miyazaki mangoes we discussed in image of the day, the most expensive variety of mangoes. So these are the four important islands of Japan. Snapshot one. Snapshot one is on built to withdraw the retrospective taxation rules that India had imposed in 2012, right? Now, 
there is a beautiful history to it and it is a very important article considering india's economy india's strategy and how fdi are planned in india right now before anything any individual or a person who is based in a particular country they are taxed the country has got the right to tax over corporation individuals and their profits and earnings right now this is how tax are planned between people and corporations so an important part of uh, this is taxation we have to pay a bare minimum of tax if we earn above a threshold right so this is one the second part is saving we can save certain amount of tax if we, if we invest in our future for example if we invest in our pension funds if we invest in certain type of organizations we save some amount of tax right and the third is tax evasion so when companies try to show less profit less income they evade tax and this is illegal right so this is a crime and the fourth is tax avoidance when loopholes are seen when loopholes are analyzed and countries try to prevent giving tax to the uh, countries the corporations try to prevent that so that is called as tax avoidance so this is the story of tax avoidance right this famous case is between vodafone cgp and hutch now hutch was an indian organization vodafone is a netherland based company and cgp is based in cayman islands cayman islands singapore mauritius these are important places tax havens right these are the places which tax less but but these are the places from where most of the investments are routed right so vodafone wanted to make an investment in india it wanted to purchase hutch and cgp owned two third of the hutch company right so what vodafone did was it acquired cgp and indirectly it acquired hutch right now tell me one thing the benefits the the benefits that is the profit or the earnings that hutch derived after selling its organization right should these be taxed or not of course they should be taxed because these are earnings earnings for the people right promoters of this hutch company but the contention was that this that this hutch company did belong to cgp which is not based in india so should government of india take the taxes from hutch or not or should mauritius or cayman islands in this case be responsible for taxation but cayman island doesn't tax because it is a tax haven country so this is how this is how the funds are routed this is how the companies the owners of hutch right would have the deal was made in a way that india would not have to pay would not have would not get any taxes right now this is where india said uh, uh, this is a 2007 case right this is where india in 2012 right retrospectively amended it, its act it said that all these previous deals will be taxed right this is where uh, important concepts of base erosion and profit sharing came into place right where countries started to realize that lot of corporations are trying to save their earnings right they are not getting taxed anywhere not even in the cayman islands not even in netherland not even in india right so this is an important component uh, general anti avoidance rules also came into being where india could tax organizations as back as 1960s right so there was a lot of un cry and then the government later said that yes they will not tax up, up to 2016 right so retrospective taxation means we are trying to tax those organizations from the past right so we are digging those graves and trying to take out tax and this is not good for investment in in any in any country india is looking forward to more investments and these measures actually withdraw the international investments in india right now the case was lost in supreme court and supreme court said that nothing illegal was done in this particular case india did not understand this this case also went to international arbitration tribunal right back in uh, uh, in in hague right and this tribunal also awarded this case in favor of the private corporation right india lost again so this was a very uh, uh, glimmering defeat right it was highlighted throughout the world that india is trying to tax its organizations india is also trying to take money retrospectively it was not reflected in the positive light and therefore now india has said fine we will withdraw these cases we will withdraw these cases but with certain conditions conditions that you will not take interest for those payments made earlier now india in certain cases like for example vodafone is one case right there are many other cases kens deal is another case right so in kens deal india has taken around 10000 crore rupees from kens company right so this company is trying to take back its money from indian government by trying to seize indian government properties or indian government psu properties for example we were, it was also in news air india properties could be seized right so kens was the one who was allowed to seize these properties and this is the kind of urgency india is facing now right so this is the reason why uh, this uh, whole uh, issue is in news indian government has said 
Fine, we will pay, pay back the amount, but we will not pay back the interest, right? You will also not lodge any further cases against the government. So, government is trying to avoid innumerable cases for the future, get into litigation. These are the conditions government has put and government has said, yes, we will not have such kind of uh, taxation before 2012. So, this is what government has said and this is what this news is about. This will also help India to promote its investment for future, to secure investments and to have stable regime for taxation in future. This is what is the new update about. India still owes 1.2 billion to Keynes now, right? So, this is the update. Important and very interesting case. Now, the second snapshot is on uh, the governor's power to pardon even the death cases. Now, this is the recent Supreme Court judgment in, in which the court says that the governors can pardon death row as well, right? Now, uh, the article 72 of the constitution mentions that the president of India has got certain powers, right? Certain powers to pardon, to remit, and commission and these kind of powers and there are two extra kind of powers the president has got to pardon in cases of court martial and to pardon in case of death row but this judgment by supreme court has said that even the governor can pardon the death sentences as well right even those sentences in which 14 years of minimum term has not been served right now section 43 433a of crpc criminal procedure code it mentions that only after having served 14 years can a person be remitted right so remitted means there will be some relaxation in their term so there are five terms that are being used pardon pardon is complete absolution right if i was to be hanged and i have been pardoned there will be no penalty to me right i'll be completely absorbed commutation commutation means giving them a lesser degree of punishment right then we have remission. Remission means the period, the period in which if, if it was five years, so remission means decreasing the amount of period of the term. What is respite? So respite means, for example, if a pregnant lady is there, if a person injured, so they will be given lesser degree of punishment. And reprieve means to stay, to stay the order so that the person can make certain appeals. So in case of commutation, the law says, now, the four kinds of uh, penalty which are usually offered, first is death penalty, then we have rigorous imprisonment, then we have simple imprisonment and then fine, right? So, death penalty, rigorous imprisonment, simple imprisonment and fine, fine is the fine penalty, right? Simple imprisonment, we stay in the law, uh, uh, we say it behind the bars, rigorous imprisonment, rigorous, that means we will have to do some physical activities, chakki peace now, right? So, we will have to work in the jail premises, we will have to do something, we will have to earn our own living, rigorous imprisonment, right? So, in case of commutation, lesser degree of award means if rigorous imprisonment was there, if they had to work in the jails, that work will not be given, it will be simple imprisonment. Simple imprisonment, if it was the case, then they might be even, even actually let, let go of. So, with fine, they can get off. So, these are the kind of various provisions the constitution also has mentioned. Now, 433A mentions that remission can only happen, lesser degree of penalty can be offered only after 14 years of jail. But this Supreme Court judgment says that no, before 14 years also, this uh, remission can be given by the governor, by the governor. So, governor has doesn't have their own special privileges and power. They, they act in the capacity of what state governments tell them, right? So, now... Now, the conclusion of this article is that state government has got two ways in which they can remit or, or pardon a person, right? If they have had 14 years of state sentence already served, they can adopt the section 433A of CRPC or if they have not served 14 years, now they can directly do it through the channel of governor, right? The governor is a respectable channel, right? The, the order of the Supreme Court also said that it can directly be passed by the state government, but since government is a respectable governor is a respectable channel so providing uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the channel through governor is a better means of this uh, uh, remission of this particular kind of incident right so this is the update image of the day is on SI427 what is this now this is an artifact an old artifact which was found which was found in uh, in the Mesopotamian region Mesopotamia is the Iraq region right so Mesopotamian empire and civilization the ones that relate to the river Tigris and Euphrates, right? So this, it was earlier understood as a problem, a problem that was listed by a school teacher as a number of school difficulties. So they would have difficulties, for example, to manage students, to manage their own uh, studies, to be able to elocute or present themselves. So 
this was earlier thought that this this graph represented their list of problems but it was later now understood that no no this is not that this is a kind of trigonometrical problem probably pythagoras problem that is being solved right so pythagoras came into being in around 600 bc 600 bc and this stone is even 1000 years before that right so around 3700 years before present this is what was existent right so this is an update from that era important to understand is that this was found in the babylonian uh, era right so uh, we are talking of the mesopotamian empire of uh, 1700 bc and right now this is preserved in a museum in istanbul turkey terms and concept the first common concept for you today is ins vitrant right so what is the update the update is that the sea trials of this uh, indigenous first indigenous aircraft carrier iac indigenous aircraft carrier one has started it is called as vikrans so let me um, quickly give you a summary of all the aircraft carriers that we have had i was under uh, same similar confusion of these names vikrant virat vikramaditya so let us uh, let us solve this puzzle vikrant vikrant the first vikrant that we had we we did have two vikrants now we do have two vikrants one was the one which is retired and now the one which has been renamed as vikrant right indigenous all these first three right so we have had four till now the first three have not been indigenous the fourth one is indigenous first one was named as vikrant second virat third vikramaditya and fourth vikrant again so fourth was indigenous the first two are uk made british made right and they gave it to us either they after they decommissioned their own aircraft carrier or in between sold to india the third was sold to india by russia right so vikram vikrant served us from 57 to 1997 right uh, uh, we had purchases from uk and virat was commissioned in India in 87 and served up to 2013. So Vikrant also served in the 1971 war, important war. And if you watch the movie Gazi attack, this was the one which was used, right? So this was an important uh, uh, Indian naval ship that was used during those times. Vikramaditya, the third one, which also was commissioned in 2013, is in active service. So we have one aircraft carrier right now, and the second one that we are building is Vikrant. It is in sea trials. So hopefully it will be commissioned by 2008. 22. So, this is the update. Remember the names Vikrant, Virat, Vikramaditya, and Vikrant again, right? So, around 76% of uh, this uh, uh, this particular aircraft carrier are indigenous, which is a very good thing, right? Snapshot 2 is on Swinhole Soft Shell Turtle, an important variety of turtle, which is one of the largest freshwater turtle species, also found in Vietnam region, right? So these are the turtles and they are critically endangered. Why? Because they are poached. They are poached for medical reasons, they are poached for their meat, right? But they are very important for dispersing seeds. They are important because they also enrich the soil nutrients. All right. Air Quality Commission. Now this commission is going to ensure that the NCR region is free of pollution, especially of pollution which relate to the stubble burning. So, Delhi authority cannot find authorities in Haryana and they cannot uh, find authorities in Punjab, right, in Rajasthan. So, this authority is going to take care of all this complete area, Delhi NCR area and the surrounding states to ensure that the pollution remains low, air quality remains high, right. So, this has been in news because uh, India has uh, been shunned internationally because of its air quality levels, in, especially in Delhi, right? National Mission on Edible Oil, Oil Palm. Now, India, we have, we have studied in innumerable editorials that uh, oil palm, oil palm is one of the important ingredients, important oils that we have been importing. This is a cheaper variety of oil that we are importing and this is a good replacement for whatever we produce in India. The oil varieties, so India oil varieties, for example, soybean oil, and then we have mustard oil, and oil from various other crops, right, pulses and crops. Now, the idea is to replace the import and to start producing our own oils. Why? Because the oil seeds, they grow in those regions as well, which have less water, right? They do not need assured irrigation facilities, less water, dry land crop, Right, oil is a dry land crop. This can also be diversify the production for Indian agriculture and give give the farmers a good source of income. So this scheme, National Mission on Edible Oil, has been initiated so that we may have increased production of these oils in northeastern states in Andaman Nicobar Islands. Right. So uh, farmers will be given financial assistance also for the same. Right now, 56% of component of the import is the palm oil itself right so we got to produce our own edible oils 
Entanglements of the day. Today's editorials. The first one relates to 30 years of economic impact. The the one the first economic reformation that we have that relates to LPG. LPG, liberalization, privatization, and globalization. So the article says that there were two kinds of people during those times. The first one who said that this is wrong, this should not be happening, and they perished with time because globalization was actually due for the whole world. And the second one was the people who believed that yes, this is right. And they started to have joint ventures, joint ventures between organizations, Indian organizations, and the ones with foreign organizations, right? So there were two kinds of joint ventures, and people indulged into it, right? Now, this was the time when competition started to flourish and people started to specialize in certain domains, certain fields. And there was an increasing distance between the government and the private organizations, right? Private, gov private governments, corporate governments also started to take roots in India during those times. For example, uh, banks, banks nationalization and certain uh, uh, happened in 1969, but privatization of banks also started during this era. And we had a whole new league of entrepreneurs in the field of service sector delivery, and IT, etc. during this time. So this is an update, uh, a largely update of what happened during those times. Okay, the second uh, editorial for today is on uh, India's food security. Now, there is a beautiful article, it talks, it says that India has had food insecurity rise during the times of COVID. We have been studying articles where, where India's food insecurity is not challenged to a great level. Why? Because of good production in agriculture in these last two years. But the truth is that we have had certain food insecurity and this has been rising. It has been 7% rise in the years of 2018 to 2020, right? Also, uh, 10, crore people, 10 crore people are in the food insecurity zone during the times of COVID, right? Since COVID, right? Now, we have had more than 100 million tons. The article says we've had more than 100 million tons, 120 million tons of food grains lying in our go-downs. However, we are not able to uh, specifically distribute it in the population of the country. So this is a great challenge for us. In fact, 2019, we had we had 32 crore less people, right, who are, who are in this kind of uh, issues throughout the world. But 237 crore people around the world are in the zone of marginal or gray food insecurity around the world. And this has been a 32 32 crore rise in 2020. That means COVID has actually impacted, right? It has also impacted India, right? As we say, 7% rise and 10 crore, right? Since the times of COVID. So the article says 36% of this 237 crore belong to South Asia. Countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, we are populated. We are very much populated. And this is where the, uh, the prime concern of the article lies. The article says that, that there are two ways in which undernutrition is calculated. One is undernourishment, right? So supply of the articles is seen, what government is distributing and what kind of nutrition is it providing. So this is one mechanism. And the second mechanism is that of moderate and severe, uh, uh, severe food insecurity crisis, which is done by Gallup World Poll, right? India does not recognize this poll. India does not even want to publish this kind of poll. India has not conducted its own poll, undernourishment poll, but India is not even recognizing this poll. This is what the article mentions, right? But the truth is that there has been a rise in the number of people who are now moderately to severely food insecure. So 43, 43 crore to 52 crore. This is the rise in India, right? Almost 10 crores since the times of COVID. Government is not revealing these kind of surveys. This is what the article says. Now, what is the difference between this kind of survey and this, the second one? The second survey, the international survey, also talks of certain very, very nuanced measures. For example, the first one sp speaks of what the government is providing. Government is providing meals to 80 crore people, right? Prime Minister uh, Garib Anna Kalyan Yojna, right? To 80 crore people, also to 8 crore migrants. This is what we learned in various articles. But the second one provides some nuances, de details. What are those? For example, there are a lot of people who are skipping meals during these times, during COVID times especially laborers, especially people who do not have enough money, right? So there are certain people who are eating less. And there are many people who are eating cheaper food, a cheaper alternative to their actual nutrition intake. So it, it, it actually counts them in as well. And this is how it says that 52 crore people in India now are food insecure, moderately to severely, right? So this is the update of the article, important article. The third article is on uh, flood management between India and Nepal. Why? Because an important river flows across the two countries and this is responsible for a lot of issues in the state of Bihar. Article starts by talking about the historical developments which says that Bihar has tried to develop infrastructure, right, especially under the government of Nitish Kumar in 2005 
and 2010 era, right? It says that this was the time not only infrastructure was created, but non-structural changes were also done. For example, preempting, preempting the flood. That means uh, uh, expecting the flood in advance and then preparing for the same, right? So institutional mechanisms, right? Then, then actually uh, ensuring that the people do not live in the flood plains. So there. Their relocation to different places. So a lot of institutional mechanism uh, changes also happened to manage this kind of flood, right? This time, 2021, Bihar has released pre-flood preparedness and flood control order 2021. So this is a good order to ensure that flood preparation be carried out in advance because this is a yearly event in Bihar, right? So the article also talks about uh, previous help from Nepal where certain uh, uh, police agencies informally came to India and they helped in building some posi barrage, etc. Right, but now there has been a less there has been less help from Nepal. The idea is to ensure that Nepal, if Nepal is releasing water during the times of flood, Nepal cannot be only only blame this situation. India has to manage its own water. And how should India manage by by having some structural reforms and institutional reforms? This is what the article again goes on to suggest. The article says that Himalayas are in a nascent stage. And the way the whole structure is designed is to ensure that a lot of water flows, especially due to climate change in the region. We also studied this in today's featured article that how climate change is impacting the river flow and increasing the, the participation of states, increasing the participation of states in flood management, right? The article says that 76% population of North Bihar, 76% population of North Bihar is impacted because of this kind of yearly flooding activity. Now see. I also discussed in the featured article today how we can make notes, right, in the form of files, right. So, the Mara project, today's featured, remember today's featured is, is the uh, feature of 6th of, 6th of August, right. So, in today's feature, I discussed how to create files and we have previously discussed about Dagmara HEP. Dagmara HEP is the largest HEP of Bihar, hydroelectric project of Bihar being built across Kosi, right? So it will help in managing the floods here. So please do uh, write this important term and concept term along with the notes for this particular editorial, right? If you find it important, right? So Kosi scheme, Kosi scheme was introduced by Jawaharlal Nehru, the article says, and we need to have such schemes for the future as well. Case study of the day is on Lavlina and Sandhya. Lavlina has secured the bronze medal in Olympic 69 kilowatt boxing and Sandhya has been her coach and trainer. Now, Lavlina has been a person who was not very well versed how to deal with fear on the boxing ring. And Sandhya, Sandhya who was her coach, she herself was paralyzed, right? She was also a boxer initially from Sikkim and she was paralyzed but she recovered from her paralysis and she later taught, uh, uh, taught her, taught Lavlina how to confront fear, right? So this is how she, she would ask her to remember these words, you are, you are a lioness, you are a lion. And during Olympics when Lavlina was not with Sandhya, she was not there with her coach. The coach was back in India, but Lavlina was there in the stage. She was found murmuring these words, these important words during the times of uh, fear, fear, fear from failure, right? So this was the time when Lavlina was murmuring these words. This is what was found. And later she actually confronted her fear. She went beyond it. She showed courage and she won the gold medal for the country, right? And this is how Every student, every person who wants to learn needs a mentor, right? And this is why we are here for you. We are here to support you. Do be with us and uh, keep watching. Thanks for watching.